today I'm actually really excited to introduce you all to Terry Stewart. Um, Terry is our Senior Relationship Manager at LinkedIn. He helps companies adopt the world's largest and most powerful professional network in order to exceed their talent acquisition and employment branding goals. And Terry has most certainly been a really trusted advisor for us here over the last couple months as we've experimented with a few branding and recruiting opportunities through LinkedIn. Um, I will say that we were a little bit skeptical at first at how you know the results were going to turn out, but as Terry will share with you later, we've actually seen some great results. Um, so now that we've tested the waters, I wanted to share my resource um, in Terry and his best practices. I know that the recruiting season is kind of warming up for a lot of you, and so I thought this was a great time to have this conversation. So I'm hoping that you guys will be able to explore some more opportunities with LinkedIn and maybe how you can use it to see a little more success this recruiting season. So with that, I will let Terry take it away. Thanks, Tanya. And thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, very excited to be leading this session uh, to talk about uh, bolstering recruiting with LinkedIn, uh, something that I'm very passionate about. So a uh, quick introduction of myself. One of the things that we do at LinkedIn um, when uh, meeting in a group setting is to uh, give a quick introduction that includes something that people wouldn't know about you by looking at your LinkedIn profile. So um, I encourage you all to, to look at my profile, and we'll go into it a little bit further. But a um, little bit more about me. I've been with LinkedIn for about a year and a half now. Um, previously to that, I was um, working with AT&T for a few years. Um, fun fact about me that you wouldn't know from my LinkedIn profile. So I grew up traveling quite a bit. Um, and I'm the youngest of four. Uh, children in my family. So anybody that has kids out there will know that flying with many people is, is not cost effective. So we drove everywhere. So one of my claims to fame is that um, I have driven to all 48 continental states. Um, it was quite a feat. We packed it into our Chevy Suburban. It was uh, Luckily, I was the smallest one at the time, so I was quite comfortable. But a little bit more about me. Um, and now I'll stop talking about myself and get more into LinkedIn. So taking a look at LinkedIn, LinkedIn is truly a, a global pool of talent. Um, as of our last earnings call, which was a couple weeks ago, uh, we now have 277 million members worldwide. Um, we're growing at two new members per second. And I think what the most impressive uh, statistic on this screen is, is, is the monthly unique visitors. So um, a network is only as strong as the people that are using it. We can, we can tout membership numbers. We can talk about there's, you know, 277 million, soon it's going to be 300 million, um, so on and so forth. But until we continue to have members coming back on a monthly basis to utilize our services, it's not going to be successful. So the fact that we have 187 million monthly unique visitors um, is phenomenal. And then you'll also see on this slide a breakdown of the membership by country. So um, call out here is 93 million members uh, of our LinkedIn members are in the United States, um, but our uh, international membership base is growing very rapidly. So taking a look at LinkedIn as a company, um, I did want to share a little bit of background on, on where we're coming from to put a good lens on where we want to go with recruiting efforts. So our mission at LinkedIn is to connect the world's professionals to make them more productive and successful. A um, couple of key things about this mission statement is the call on professionals. This is a professional network. Um, we're not just going to have it open to anybody and everybody. Um, we do put a laser focus on the idea of the professional. Another thing that you won't notice or that you'll notice for, um, in this mission statement is nowhere does it say, hey, we're going to get people jobs. Um, that's not what we're about. We're about empowering professionals to be the best at the job that they're currently doing and to achieve their best in whatever career opportunity they pursue. And the vision of LinkedIn is to create economic opportunity for every professional. Um, this doesn't mean um, just you know, white collar workers. This means every professional in the world, every working individual. So I did want to, you know, when we transition into this, I know we've got quite a group here on the line. Um, I did want to make a call out to some LinkedIn rock stars that we have. So um, I went through and I pulled, based off of the registrants for the webinar, I pulled um, some information on who the earliest adopter is, so the person that joined LinkedIn the earliest, 
the most connected, so that will be the individual that has the most first degree connections on LinkedIn. The most popular, I know we're getting catty and going back to high school with this, but uh, the most popular is um, the person that has the most profile views in the last 30 days, and then the most endorsed. So um, last year we rolled out endorsements as a short form uh, way of recommending people for different skills. Um, and we've seen billions of endorsements, so kudos to this person. But call out to Georgetta. So Georgetta is um, our earliest adopter on the line here. Most connected is Stephen. Courtney, you are the most popular. Congratulations. And then Tom is the most endorsed. So uh, thank you to you four and for being LinkedIn rock stars. And uh, if you guys need motivation to knock off these people from their pedestal, go out right ahead. So I want to transition into why members come to LinkedIn. Um, I, as I mentioned, I've been with LinkedIn for a year and a half. So um, I have a lot of friends that like to give me very candid feedback about LinkedIn. They'll say, uh, hey, Terry, I don't like the amount of communication I get from LinkedIn. I say, hey, go to your settings and adjust it. You can do any of that. Um, or people will tell me, oh, you work for LinkedIn, that's great. I'm not on LinkedIn because I'm not looking for a job right now. And I say, awesome, neither am I. Um, I wasn't, and I'm not saying that just because I worked for LinkedIn. Um, when I joined LinkedIn, I wasn't, uh, I was looking for a job then. But when I updated my profile um, throughout the years, it was not because I was looking for a new opportunity, it was because I wanted to be better at the job that I was currently doing. So uh, members come to LinkedIn to have it be their professional profile record, so creating a professional identity. Um, I use Facebook, I use Twitter, I use Instagram. Uh, those are more reflective of my interests and not me as a professional. Uh, we also have people coming to LinkedIn for networking, um, to connect, find, and be found. So I will say I connect with a lot of my friends, a lot of you know, peers I have, a lot of my beer drinking buddies. Uh, that's who I'll connect with on LinkedIn. But I also will connect with professionals that I aspire to be like. So people that are in you know, positions that I um, aspire to attain one day, I'll, I'll connect with them on LinkedIn to figure out best practice on how I can emulate what the success that they've seen. And then lastly, we, people join LinkedIn for the insights. Um, following and interacting with thought leaders in their industries to, again, be better at the job that they're currently doing. So where do we start with LinkedIn? We start with the professional identity of record, which is your profile. So I'm actually going to jump out of uh, the presentation here and go live into LinkedIn. So you'll see here, this is my profile. One of the things that I have at the top is I have my, um, my statement at the top being helping companies rethink the way they discover talent. With everything that I do on my LinkedIn profile, I do it to answer the question, what do you do? Um, I could very well put at the top that I am a uh, senior SMB relationship manager with LinkedIn. That's my title. That's not what I do. What I do in my role is to help companies rethink the way that they discover talent. Um, so if we take a look at the top section of the profile, the summary section is very important. Um, this is uh, a way to identify who you are as a professional, um, or you can also take a turn on it like I have and, and use this to uh, be a brand ambassador for LinkedIn. So this is where you'll see I've got our mission um, mission statement lab labeled there. I also go into talking about some personal things I like to do. So uh, the fact that I like sports. Uh, you don't have to take your interests out of the equation when you're talking about your professional identity because it is who makes up who you are. A huge call out here, and this is an improvement that we've made on the profile in the last um, last year or so is the ability to add rich, uh, rich media directly to your profile. So you'll see here I have a couple links. Um, this first one is on why LinkedIn is so cool. When I click on it, it will open up a slideshow via SlideShare. We can go through, and this is a visual story that one of our employees made up on why LinkedIn is an awesome company and why everybody that um, looks at my profile should be jealous that they don't work at LinkedIn. Uh, this is a great avenue um, for you as a professional to, if you have a portfolio, if you have work that you've done, showcase that work right here on your profile as a visual representation of your skill set. 
Scrolling down a little bit more when we get into the experience. Um, a big, big error that I see a lot of people doing with the experience section is they will copy and paste bullet points from their resume. And they'll say, this is what I did. Um, you'll see here, I am in sales. Um, when we look at my um, experience here, salespeople care about numbers. You don't see any numbers in this area because that's not what I do. Again, I look at everything on my profile in the lens of ex or answering the question to people viewing it. Terry, what do you do? Um, and this is where I put out, you know, I serve as a trusted advisor of LinkedIn corporate clients to stri and strive to maximize the return on investment. I elevate the client experience by enabling companies to find and engage the talent they need to be successful. That is truly what I do in my role at LinkedIn. Um, I have also, as you can see here, added in um, another piece of rich media, and this is a YouTube video. So you can also put in videos, and, and this is an awesome, awesome video about um, our members talking about the power of LinkedIn. So if I keep going down, you'll see, again, in all of my experience here, there's not, um, there, there aren't sales numbers there. It's not talking about my quota attainment um, because that doesn't define me as a professional. If we go down, one er another area that a lot of people miss out on on their LinkedIn profile is not outlining the volunteer experience and causes. Um, because people will look at their professional identity and say, you know, I'm going to limit it to what I do that makes me money. Um, that's not true. Volunteer causes, um, humanitarian work that you do is just, I would say, uh, 1A to what you do for uh, profit. And so I've gone in here and I've put out there that I'm looking for an opportunity to join a nonprofit board. That is something that I am very um, passionate and interested in, so I've outlined that there. I also will go down to uh, list out some causes that I care about and organizations that I support. Last but not least, um, education. This is huge. Um, Fill out um, the education portion um, because I will tell you this right now, the, every job that I have gotten um, in my career has come as a result of my connections within um, the University of Dayton. So this is very, very, very key to building out your professional identity. So now that I've gone through the profile and you've updated that, now what? What do you do on LinkedIn? I always tell people, and, and I use this analogy um, with my clients who have purchased products with LinkedIn, but it also applies for members, is LinkedIn is like a gym membership. You can sign up, you can go pay you know, 50, if you're in Chicago, it could be 100 bucks a month to join a gym because you're like, I've got this New Year's resolution, I'm gonna get in shape. First step, join that gym. You never go to the gym, you're never going to get in shape. Similarly, if you create a LinkedIn profile and you have a bare bones minimum and then you don't do anything with it, you're not going to you're not going to grow as a professional. You're not going to see results. Um, so the the making a profile is just the very first step in the process of fully leveraging LinkedIn. So now what do you do? You grow your network. So as I mentioned uh, previously with the um, networking piece. This is not just let me make sure that I connect with everybody I'm friends with on Facebook. It's also going beyond that to saying, you know, what do I aspire to be in my life? And who are, who are people that are doing that successfully today? How can I learn from them? Connect with those people. Um, so constantly be growing your network, um, but make sure that you're growing with the right people. Share status updates. So um, this is both um, as a, on a personal but also on a company level, um, talk about what's going on. I, I will go in and I use, um, I borrow a lot of content. I don't recreate the wheel. When I find you know, an article or a piece of advice that I find particularly um, interesting to myself, I share with my network because I know there are other people that will also enjoy that. And a company, from a company perspective, is complete the company page. So you guys will all have a company page on LinkedIn. If you don't already, let me know. You can set one up for free. Uh, but this gives you an opportunity to talk, basically fill out the section of about us. So 
What are you all about? You can also put an image up there as well as share content. So make sure that that's fully populated because, again, that is free. Joining groups is big. So there are many, 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 many groups on LinkedIn. If you have a topic that you're particularly interested in, search it. I imagine that there's probably a group on LinkedIn with relevant professionals on that topic. Follow university pages. So university pages is something we launched um, over the summer this past year, and uh, I'm going to actually dive into that deeper when we go live into um, that page, so I'll save some of that. But it is crazy the amount of analytics that go behind the company pages to find um, a lot of data to make informed decisions. And lastly, influencer posts. So influencer posts is something that we also rolled out in the last year um, to get the the brightest and uh, most innovative people in the world to share their experiences and their thoughts. Um, we'll take a look at that further. But this is also an example of a group, so the Chicago Lawyer Network. Um, I literally went into LinkedIn and I searched Chicago Lawyer and was able to find this group. So uh, anything that you think is going to be interesting, search it, and I imagine there's going to be a relative group to it. So university pages, again, these are a couple of screenshots here, but I, to, I don't think they do justice. So I'm going to go back into LinkedIn here. I'm going to go up and talk about you know, a, a school that's relative to the audience on this call and relative to us in Chicago. So I'm going to go up to the top. I'm going to go Northwestern University School of Law. We do do smart searching on LinkedIn. So if you saw, well, before I put in law, you can see that there are um, companies that come back as a result. There's groups that come back as a result, and also universities. Um, so I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to click on the Northwestern University School of Law. So this is the hub for the Northwestern Law School on LinkedIn. Um, currently, there are 8,700 followers of Northwestern Law School on LinkedIn. I can go here and follow to be um, kept up to speed on any content that is shared here. And let me see here. So if I scroll down, a couple key areas to look at um, is this section, so who you know. This will, If you're doing recruiting at a different particular law school, I always always recommend going to the or the um, sorry, the university page, and go into this section to see who you currently know there. So um, I know, I have one person reconnection is my contact, Molly, who uh, went to the university, or Northwestern University Law School. Um, but I also have 296 secondary connections. So these are people that I can tap into if I'm trying to recruit out of Northwestern's law school. Um, you can also go in and see notable alumni. So you can go through here and say, okay, People that went to law school at Northwestern, where did they end up? Not only just the notable alumni, but where they ended up, you can search all of the alumni. So this is a great tool, um, and I said we've got some crazy analytics behind this, but I can go here and say, okay, people that attended the Northwestern University of Law, the School of Law between 1900 and 2021, um, it will give me a breakdown to see where they live, where they work, what they do, what they studied, what they're skilled at, and how I'm connected to them. So if I want to go back here and say, okay, where they work, Kirkland and Ellis has the most, um, outside of Northwestern University School of Law, which we're going to uh, take that out as an employer because all students will have that listed, but uh, Kirkland and Ellis is a, are is employing the highest number of Northwestern law students. If I'm looking at this now, I'm figuring out what Kirkland and Ellis is doing that I could be emulating. So similarly, when we look at um, digesting content on LinkedIn, um, that comes really in the form of LinkedIn Pulse. So um, if, if some of you may be familiar with the name Pulse, Pulse was a standalone um, app. It was a news aggregator. 
um, before being acquired by LinkedIn. And so we've taken everything they do in terms of aggregating content and incorporated it into the LinkedIn network. So the way that you can go about uh, viewing anything on Pulse, you'll go up to the top and you'll see interests. From here, I can scroll down and go to Pulse. This will go through and it populates immediately with my news because I've gone in and I've followed a lot of thought leaders um, throughout many industries, throughout many countries, um, because I think the content that they're sharing will be beneficial to me. Um, so I agree with all of that. You can also go to the tab here, Influencer Posts. This is where um, it's going to show all influencer posts that are going to be relevant to you. As well as you can see all of the influencers that are um, contributing content to LinkedIn. Uh, so you'll see here, Richard Branson, the founder of Virgin Group. Uh, I am absolutely following him because I have an affinity for uh, Virgin Airlines. This is a quick plug and they did not pay me to say this. Hands down the best flying experience I've ever had. But Richard Branson is such a visionary, such an imaginative mind that he's got 3.8 million people following the content that he puts out on LinkedIn. You can go through and there's any list of um, thought leaders. In, with a click of a button, you can start following them. So if I want to start following Meg Whitman, who's the CEO of Hewlett Packard, I'm now following her. So every time that she puts a post out onto LinkedIn, I'm going to then see it in my newsfeed. This is a great way of going back to the, um, to the piece of, of being the best professional you can be at your current position, um, is learning from the people that are the best. We also go through um, and break it down by channels. So if there are overarching themes that you want to be uh, following, you can definitely do it this way as well. So um, some of these that you see checked, you know, I've got um, the best advice. So when public, when uh, influencers put out content about the best advice they've ever received, uh, I'm following that channel, so I will be fed up that content. So we talk about um, the company page, and when I said you know, completing the company page and, and why that matters is because um, by doing that, you're going to generate followers. Um, why do followers matter? Because I'll share a lot of statistics with you right here. Um, over 2 billion updates are seen weekly across LinkedIn. And that, B, that billion with a B, um, in case you were wondering. Content gets six times more engagement than jobs. So when you're sharing, um, status updates and what's going on with your company, people are more engaged with that than if you're just putting, hey, we're hiring on LinkedIn. 33% of LinkedIn traffic comes from mobile devices, and this is an upward trend, so that's just going to go, uh, that, that number is going to continue to increase quarter after quarter, year after year. So uh, the big key on this is followers can be marketed to wherever they are. They're not locked down to being on the desktop to consume that content. 71% of members will follow a company for jobs. So when you look at your company followers, um, that's a great, way, great place to start your recruiting efforts. Is people that have already raised their hand and said, I'm interested in you as a company. Of that, 78% of company followers are more likely to respond to an in-mail. And in-mail is our um, premium messaging uh, avenue. So we'll go into that a little bit further. But essentially what that means is when you've got a recruiter reaching out to uh, candidates on LinkedIn, they're going to be much more likely to respond if they're following your company. And then followers are also two times more likely to recommend your business. And last but not least, why followers matter is because they're free. Um, you can, you know, by putting out uh, relevant content via status updates, you're going to generate more followers and it's free. So take a look at what, um, what you should be doing in terms of status updates. So the art of the status update. Uh, think like a journalist. Don't bury the lead. So if you um, are getting something from another source, call out that source. Um, concise intros and snappy headlines are more likely to result in higher engagement. Always include a clear call to action, like a link. Um, when compared to updates without links, including a link can drive two times more engagement. 
ask thoughtful questions to involve your audience. Uh, so start a conversation by asking a question that is relevant, question that is relevant to your target audience. Always include an image or other rich media. Uh, so we, you can stand out with an eye-catching image or some some for, sort of rich media, whether it's slides, whether it's um, a video. And images generally result in a 98% higher comment rate. Post YouTube videos to encourage sharing. So links to YouTube videos play directly in the LinkedIn feed and usually result in a 75% higher share rate. Develop content that is snackable and valuable. So um, I, I particularly enjoy this one because uh, a quick anecdote, uh, I have an older brother who is far more intelligent than I am. And so he, he, has, he shares a lot of content um, whether it's emailing me a link or um, sending me a Facebook note, sharing it on LinkedIn. And the first thing I'll do is I'll always look at those articles and I'll scroll down and I'm like, wow, this is like a 15-page article. And I'm not the quickest reader in the world, so I'll look at it and be like, I can't read this right now. And, and if I say I can't read it right now, the likelihood of me going back to it is slim. So uh, definitely, definitely, definitely develop content that is snackable and valuable. And so um, content that is quick to consume and then provide quality content that members will want to share with their networks. Avoid hyper-targeting. So um, when you look at your audience on LinkedIn, um, make sure that you're not just putting out uh, content that is applicable to a, a very niche part of your audience so as to not ignore everybody else. Engage with members through comments. So uh, this is a great way for you to keep the conversation going. Uh, comments are a great place to respond to positive reactions, uh, but also make sure that you're monitoring discussions so you can remove any inappropriate comments and proactively handle customer service issues that may surface. One of the biggest, biggest things you no-nos to do is not respond to negative feedback. Uh, this is a great avenue for you to be able to nip that in the butt and, and give a quality response to any negative feedback you may receive. And last but not least, don't be tied to just the work week. Uh, professionals engage with content updates across devices throughout the week with strong engagement throughout the weekend. So consider, consider adopting a you know, quote unquote always on approach. Um, it doesn't have to be uh, working tirelessly on Saturdays and Sundays, but make sure that you're putting content out there because that's when a lot of people have downtime that they're going to be um, digesting that content. So now I'm going to go into a couple of examples of, of what this looks like in real life. So um, this is the One North Interactive company page. So this is the main hub that they have on LinkedIn. Um, you'll see uh, I have an arrow point there. They have 719 followers. I pulled this the other day. Now it's up to like 750 followers. So uh, I'm getting a lot of thumbs up and, and cheers over here. Um, they are driving that number up through some of the, the initiatives that they've taken internally here. But when they put recent updates on um, LinkedIn, they're going to show up here. So you'll see um, One North Interactive, congratulations to Loeb and Loeb LLP on the launch of a beautiful website. So when they put that out on LinkedIn, not only is it going to show up on their company page, it's going to go out to all 750 followers. So when I then log into my LinkedIn, in my news feed right there, I'm going to see that, that uh, company update that they've put out. And it gives me another opportunity to, to like it, to share it, to comment on it, to make it more viral. So now we're going to take a look at you know, shifting lenses here to some of the premium features of, of partnering with LinkedIn. So um, when we look at the LinkedIn talent pool of 277 million members, um, about roughly 80% of them are passive candidates, meaning they're like me, they're like hopefully, well not hopefully, most people on this call, they're employed currently, and to the best of anybody else's knowledge, they're happily employed. They're not necessarily looking for a new opportunity. But at the same time, they're open to new opportunities that come about. 
So um, when we look at leveraging some of the premium tools on LinkedIn, it's about reaching the best candidates, not just the active ones. So I went in and did some digging to see what would be relevant to this audience on who is on LinkedIn. So again, we can talk about the 277 million membership base, um, but really, you guys are going to want to know what's, what positions are on LinkedIn that are pertinent to you. So attorneys. There are 4.8 million attorneys on LinkedIn. Paralegals. There's 435,000 paralegals. Legal admins. So I made sure to pull this, the legal administrator position, uh, to show that you know, while 11,000 pales in comparison to 277 million, when you need a legal admin, you only need one. So 11,000 people out there for your one open position, it's still a lot. And it shows that this is not just a, uh, a network for um, the highest uh, level positions in the world. This is incorporating everybody. Law clerk, 180,000, 180, excuse me, law clerks on LinkedIn. Legal secretary, there's 118,000 on LinkedIn. Accountants, 7.5 million accountants on LinkedIn. And law students or JD candidates, there's roughly 80,000 of them on LinkedIn. So we take a look at passive versus active candidates. So there is a, there are fundamental differences between active and passive candidates. So look at passive candidates is they don't have a current resume. If somebody came to me, and I actually ran into this recently because um, as you saw from my profile, I'm interested in um, joining a nonprofit uh, board. And one of the nonprofits that I was in, talk in talks with asked me to send over my resume. And I was like, okay, I'll get back to you on that because I don't have a current resume. I'm not actively looking for a job, so there's no need for me to have that updated. Uh, active candidates may listen to opportunity. So we did a, we did a poll and, um, of LinkedIn members. They came back that uh, upwards of 90% of passive candidates said that they're willing to have a conversation if the opportunity is the right fit. So while they're passive and they're not looking for a job, if you've got a great relevant opportunity for them, they're going to listen. They, not, they don't respond to apply now. So we reach out with messaging saying, hey, Terry, I saw you're a great fit for our position. Here's a link. Go apply for our job. I'm not going to do it. Also very interested in networking because, again, these are the professionals that are um, going out there and using LinkedIn to become better at the job that they're currently doing. Also, they may be a fit for future openings. Opening. So this is an opportunity to build a pipeline or a bench of relevant talent that you can tap on and say, hey, Terry, we've been talking for a while here. I know that you weren't, you know, six months ago when we had this conversation, you weren't really interested in the position. Just want to check in and see how everything's going. Active candidates, on the other hand, will apply to your ATS or your website. So they'll be the ones that are going, um, looking up your company website, looking through the jobs, applying for your job. They may apply for numerous jobs. Um, they may apply for jobs that they're not qualified for. Um, they're also going to listen to opportunities because they want they want a new opportunity. So they're going to definitely be um, the ones that are going to listen, and they're also going to respond quickly. So if you have an active job seeker um, that you send a message to, they're going to get back to you right away because they know that um, if they don't, you're going to move on to the next person. Uh, they're also going to seek information um, about your company, so they're going to be the ones that are hounding you about the job, um, and also they may have already interviewed with you in the past and they're coming back for another round. So our, our, in terms of our talent solutions at LinkedIn, LinkedIn Recruiter is our flagship product. So this helps fill the gap between um, the recruiting process of old and you know, where most companies are, are doing uh, talent sourcing today. So the, the old way is using traditional job boards. So um, job boards is what Talent acquisition has been focused around um, over the last 10 years. Um, before that, it was newspapers. So people would put, before that, it was the help wanted sign in your window. So um, this is the evolution. So with traditional job boards, it's very much a post and pray uh, mentality. So um, what, that, what I mean by that is I'm going to put my job out there. I need, a, I need a new attorney. I'm going to post my attorney position on a job board, and I'm just going to pray that I get applicants. 
and in this day and age, right now in the, the economy that we're in and the, the situation that the legal field is in, if you post a, if you post a position out there for an attorney, you are going to get a slew of applicants. Um, I'm, not, I'm not an expert in this. You guys would know much better than I am. But I do have friends that uh, have recently gone to law school and realized that they can't get a job because the uh, environment is very, very competitive. Um, with traditional job boards, you're also only capturing active candidates. So when you post um, jobs on a on a job board, you're not getting passive candidates. There's no re reason for a passive candidate to go to a job board. I'm perfectly happy with my job at LinkedIn. I have no intention of leaving. I'm not going to go check out what's on the job boards to see what might be out there. Um, it's also very reactive. So you're putting your job out there, and you're putting all the onus on somebody else acting upon that. So uh, a lot of times you'll see low quality hires from that. It's very time inten intensive to be able to go through that process. Um, using LinkedIn network and a recruiter product, um, you're capturing both the passive and the active candidates. Um, so you're going out and you're, in your mind, you're, you're building out a profile for the ideal candidate for your position. You, know, you, want, you want an attorney that went to University of Chicago or Northwestern law schools that graduated top of their class um, that has three to five years of experience that worked at uh, XYZ law firm. Recruiter gives you the ability to target exactly who those individuals are and then reach out to them. So this would help you build talent pipelines um, with passive candidates um, and it's also proactive. So you're, you're sitting there in your mind, you're saying, I want these, this type of person, I'm going to go get them rather than hoping that they come back and apply for your job. A lot of times you see high quality candidates this way as well as time savings because the, the legwork isn't on anybody else. Um, you're the one doing the work. Another area that, um, that One North has invested in is, is in their employees. So um, One North has taken an initiative in branding and turning their employees into brand ambassadors. So I have an example here of um, John Simpson, who's the CEO of One North Interactive. And this is a snapshot of his profile. I will say, I didn't, I didn't tell him to put this on here, but I have to give a quick call out. You'll see he has all of the rich media on his profile that I said is very vital. Um, but one thing that I want to call action is, this might not resonate with you guys right now, but when I look at John's profile, one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my own picture that's right over there. Because I am egotistical and I'm vain and I like seeing my own face. So, I'm immediately drawn over there, and I was just trying to I was just trying to research John because I was like, hey, he's the CEO of one of my clients. Let me try and get engaged with him. And immediately I'm drawn to my own picture. And I look at it a little bit further, and I see, Terry, keep up with relevant opportunities at One North Interactive. You know, visit the careers page for, for One North Interactive, and I can immediately click through there. So One North has taken the number one activity that's done on LinkedIn, which is viewing each other's profiles and turn it into a recruitment opportunity. They've turned their employees' profiles into being brand ambassadors. So when I click through onto that advertising that I'm set up, I'm taken to the, the career page that they've built out. So this is more than just a page. This is where you can really hone in on delivering your employer value proposition. It's not who you are as a company in terms of what you do. Um, but instead, this is honing in on what it's truly like to be a part of that team. So it's got a banner image at the top showing all their employees, you know, go ahead and be ambitious. We may not be able to predict the future, but we can create it. That's powerful. And that's, that if, I'm, if I'm a passive candidate and I'm looking at them like, yeah, I want to create the future. I don't want to be you know, sitting by while somebody else does it. Um, they've also gone through to then um, populate you know, some open positions that they have here as well as rich media in the middle here where there's a video about John and it's bootstrapping with John Simpson. Um, continuing on, they also have employee testimonials. So um, great thing here is the, a quote from Alexander who's a technical lead. So um, what this does is if, if a recruiter at One North is reaching out to me as a passive candidate and I click through to their profile, which we just showed, and then I click through to the, the careers page here to find out a little bit more about One North and what it's like to work there, 
I can then see relevant employees talking about how much they love working at One North. And I have the ability to then reach out to them, which I would do, and I'd say, hey, Alexander, you know, want to shoot you a quick note. I saw your quote on the One North um, page on LinkedIn. Um, Kelsey in your HR department just reached out to me about a career opportunity. wonder if I could pick your brain about it. That's what I would be doing. And that's what I know a lot of other um, professionals would do as well. So talk about the impact on that. So this is something that we um, implemented for One North um, in December and um, wanted to see what the impact of, of turning uh, the employees into brand ambassadors and also putting more of that branding on LinkedIn would have. So you'll see I took this screenshot um, and the date I have highlighted is December 12th, which is when um, the branding pieces went live for One North Interactive. So as of December 12th, 2013, they had 457 followers on LinkedIn. Um, as I mentioned earlier, when I pulled it today, they have 750. So look at that, in a, in a two month span, One North Interactive has seen a 65% increase in followers. This is huge. Um, now, you know, when we go back to all that, that page full of statistics I gave you on why followers matter, they've captured that. So key takeaways from our session here. So um, first and foremost, go back, complete your profile. Um, include the rich media. Answer the question, what do you do? Um, have, try to have that mentality with everything that you're putting on your profile um, and not say, uh, hey, you know, I was at 125% of my quota attainment in 2013. That, that doesn't tell anybody. They, they want to know what you do. Um, also include your volunteer work and your education. Join groups and participate. Um, if you take nothing away, remember that uh, LinkedIn is like a gym membership. You can sign up, you can pay for it, but if you don't ever use it, you're not going to see results. Complete your company page and share updates. Again, going back to the why followers matter. Um, this is a free avenue for you to share content with people that have already raised their hand to say, I want to know more about your company. Follow your alma mater and other relevant universities. So um, going back to the university pages, I showed you the Northwestern University School of Law. There's also a Northwestern page. So every undergraduate um, and most graduate uh, schools will have their own pages. Make sure that you're following uh, not only your own alma mater, but also schools that you're interested in attracting talent from. Nail the basics, then talk about uh, taking your, or think about taking your LinkedIn presence to the next level. So I, we split this up and went through a lot of the free things that you could be doing on LinkedIn today. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say everybody on this line should fully invest everything in recruiting with LinkedIn. Um, really get the basis going with all of the free content. Um, and then look at taking your, uh, your recruiting efforts to the next level. And I also included a great quote that I, that I really, really enjoy, and I think um, you can take this to heart on your social media um, initiatives as well as your recruiting initiatives, is that if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. So make sure that you're really honing in on your craft and becoming a master at it um, so that then you can um, explain it simply and clearly. So with that, I thank you um, for your time. I hope everybody gained some knowledge from this. Uh, do not hesitate to reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jerry. Um, just a reminder, we're going to open it up for our Q&A session now. So if you do have a question, you can submit it using the question function, which is located in your GoToWebinar control panel at the right side of your screen. Uh, we're going to take a quick break here to collect the questions we have gotten, and we'll be back with the answers. Okay, let's open up with the first question, and I just want to also mention one more time that if we don't get to your question live on the line, uh, we will follow up with you after the webinar. The first one we have is, when he says entering slides, what type of slides does he mean? Can these be slides from a PowerPoint or Prezi? Yes, so um, at all, when, whenever you see a slideshow on LinkedIn, um, it is powered by SlideShare. So if you go, uh, you can upload PowerPoints there. I believe you can even upload um, like PDF files. Whatever file uh, type that you can load into SlideShare, 
um, you will simply then just take that URL from the slide share and uh, you can paste it onto LinkedIn and share it that way. Okay, our next question is, expertise cannot be used in the legal world unless you actually have some type of credentials to back that up. Therefore, having the word expertise associated with endorsements is problematic for attorneys. Has this been brought to the attention of LinkedIn, and if so, is it being addressed? It has, and it's not just tied down to the legal field. This, we also see this with financial regulations. Um, so I do have um, other clients who are um, banks who are in the financial field, and um, we, uh, from a LinkedIn perspective, we will never lock that down um, because everything that we do at LinkedIn is um, with the uh, notion of members first. So we do what's best in the best interest of all of our members. Um, so in anything in terms of regulatory for your industry, um, that's up to the users to abide by social media guidelines for that. Okay, our next question is, how do you create a extra tabs in your account, i.e. careers, services, etc.? cetera? Um, do I have to upgrade my account to at least a premium, premium one to be able to do so? Yeah, so um, the services tab, so you'll see most of the products and services is um, a free tab that would come on the company page. Uh, in terms of the careers tab, that is something that when we showed the One North example that they have invested in, so that is a product. Um, so that would be something that you'd have to uh, coordinate with um, with the LinkedIn rep in order to get set up on. Okay, so our last question we'll get to on the line is, what can you tell us about LinkedIn's announcement yesterday that it plans to open up its influencer publishing platform to all members? Uh, your guess is as good as mine. Yeah, and I say that facetiously. Um, that, that was an announcement that um, came out to us shortly before it was re released to the public. Um, this is in response to the overwhelming response that we've seen from our influencer posts. So um, we are striving to be a publishing platform um, because of the content that people are sharing. So this just will allow all users to be able to, use, to share long form content on LinkedIn. Um, so it's not just going to be locked down to um, the, the influencers that we have in our system today. It will be opened up so that every member um, can share beyond just a, a quick blurb. It can share um, long form content, uh, which will just perpetuate more and more um, content and, and I guess content sharing on LinkedIn. So uh, that is as you, as you mentioned, something that was released yesterday. So there's so much more to come on that, and it is a scaled rollout, so um, it will be rolled out to a certain chunk of members before um, everybody else. So uh, my last tidbit on that one is stay tuned. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Well, Terry, thank you so much for sharing all of your knowledge. Um, as I said before, it's been a great resource, and I hope that you all enjoyed um, being able to kind of get into his mind as well. Um, again, if we didn't get to your questions, we'll follow up with you after the webinar. Um, but thank you, everyone, for joining, and have a great day.